Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Romanda Xiang from Style Rai Fashion Blog. I have never done a review video of any of my designer shoes and the designer bags. So today I'm very excited to do this and to show you my collection of top of the line designer handbags as well as top of the line designer shoes. Not only you'll get to see my collection, but you will also get my feedback on why I like those bags, why don't I like it, and whether I recommend it or not. you can easily access so it's very practical however the number one complaint is it's when you put a full-size wallet into this bag it's very hard to take it out because the opening isn't really big so if your wallet is full and it's full size and you have a lot of cash inside or cards or whatever then it makes kind of a an effort to put it in and take it out um, but I do like inside the bag, there's a side pocket as well as a separate compartment with zip so that you can keep some of the items very secure. Um, because the leather is very durable, so relatively this bag is heavy. So if you have a very full wallet plus the iPhone and all the other items I mentioned, then if you wear this bag whole day, your shoulder will feel slightly tired. In general, I'm very happy with this bag. Nice color, I love the stud on the bottom, so your bag leather never touches any surfaces to get dirty. So that's very cool design. And the strap, you can take it off, so you can use it as a handbag. Which is one thing I love is when someone designs a multi-use bag, um, I'd like it to be used in both ways as as much authentic as it can be. So the fact you can take the strap off rather than hiding it to me is a big plus. So in general, I will recommend this bag. Up next, I'd like to review my newly acquired YSL bag. This guy is also a multi-usage bag. As you can see, it comes with a long strap. So basically, you can wear it as a fanny bag, which is very much in trend nowadays. And you can also use it crossbody and have your bag either in front of your chest or down in the middle of your chest, whatever in your favor. And lastly, you can take out the strap and you can use it as a handbag, which in fact I just featured in one of my recent look. This bag, I have to say, I just love the specialty of this material. It's basically made of silk and as you can tell, it's metallic. Um, and then inside is made of leather. So you open it and there's a tiny pack in the back where you can put your IDs, whatever, and there's a car pocket. There's also a zip pocket in the front where you can put in things that you like to secure. And I like the size of this bag because you can put an iPhone of any size, no problem, a car key, a lipstick, basically all the essentials you, you need uh, when you're going out at night or during the day. Um, and then I just love how chic and clean and modern looking it is and the color is just catches people's eye and metallic is very much in trend and because the fact of this metallic is mostly silver tone you can literally wear it with any outfit so if you guys follow my blog tightly you see it I featured this bag in one of my recent looks while I was in New York Fashion Week check it out and you'll see how it works on your body up next, I'd like to review a very classic bag. Um, it's a very well-known brand. I believe every fashion blogger, even any girl who loves fashion, probably have a piece of this brand. It's a Chanel bag. It's the Le Boy series, and it's a medium size. Um, when I got this bag, I was um, not so sure about it. And 
I always at the edge of whether I should own a piece of Chanel bag or not because the price is very expensive. Most of the bags cost somewhere minimum $3,000, $4,000 if not more. So it is a big purchase decision. And I, at the time I bought this bag, I think I've owned maybe five designer bags. And I always ask myself, should I have a Chanel bag? All of my friends have a Chanel bag. In fact, some of my friends have like 10 Chanel bags. So I was wondering what's special about this brand and whether I should really check out. And one day I walk into Nordstrom and then one lady is buying this bag and I happen to see it. So I said, can I try? Um, so I put it on my body, I tried it and I fell in love with it right away. So I put my name down and a couple weeks later I got my first Chanel bag. So now I've owned it for about a year. Um, let's start with positive. This bag is the perfect size, either as a shoulder bag, either on your shoulder with two straps folded together like this. Basically, you kind of just double loop it. That way it becomes a shoulder bag. It's a perfect lens where it sits, it's perfect. And then it's also a perfect lens when, when you use a shoulder bag that just kind of hang on the side of your body. Um, and the best part is, you know how you own a lot of bags, they said you can use it as a shoulder bag or use it as a crossbody, but when you use it as a crossbody, they're either way too long or they way too short. But the thing about this Lavoie bag is whatever it sits, it sits perfectly. So as a crossbody bag, it sits almost perfect for my height. So I'm about 5 four feet um, and I just love how it lands. Um, like I said, the size of this bag is perfect. Um, it basically just has one big compartment and one kind of uh, side pocket without the zip closure. My full size wallet, my Bulgari wallet fits in there perfectly. But after I put my Bulgari wallet, the only space left is for a car key, one lipstick, and that's about it. Um, but if I don't put my wallet, then I can put a fair amount of stuff in there and it'll be happy and easy access and not too crowded or ruining the shape of my bag. Um, so those are all the positives, and this leather is just very durable. I've been um, using it almost non-stop, summer through winter. And as you can see, there's barely any scratches on the outside surface, um, and the bottom holds its shape very well. The metals get slightly scratched up if you're not too careful with it, but nice things you can always get it shined up. Um, now, the cons. So, the fact this bag is made with very durable leather as well as very high quality metal, if you use this bag more than half day, that's when your shoulder is going to start to feel sore as well as kind of uh, achy. So I wouldn't recommend this bag for travel because if you travel for a long time, you will be wearing this bag every day, then your shoulder, depends on how you wear it, it's going to get sore. And especially people like me, I like to use full size wallet. I hate to change wallet depending on which bag I'm using, which causes a lot of trouble and sometimes you lose stuff. So I don't change wallet, which means my full size wallet is going to be in there, plus the, the weight of this bag. In the end of the day, my shoulder was just complaining, crying. So I wouldn't recommend for travel, for living in the city, going out for a city walk for a couple hours. That's totally fine, very stylish and it goes with all kinds of outfits. If you want to see how it works with different style of outfit, like casual, night look, evening gown, or even a business casual or business, it goes with almost every style of outfit. You can check out my blog and you'll see how it looks. Next up, I'd like to review a new bag I just bought about a couple weeks ago. Um, in fact, I just shot this look, a look with this bag and I loved how it looks on the picture. Um, so this is by a brand that I'm not familiar with, um, but I really fall in love with the versatility of this bag. Um, it's a brand called G-U-D-E. I don't want to pronounce it because I don't know how i suppose to pronounce it. Um, anyway, this bag is another multi-usage bag. So it comes with this kind of chain uh, like that. It's very unique. You don't see it often. And nice thing about it, I don't think it's actually made of metal. It's probably made, made of either plastic or acrylics. So it's relatively light. It won't have the issue that we just talked about in the Chanel Lavoy bag. Um, and then you can change the strap to two other straps. This strap will transform the bag into a shoulder bag. And this bag, this belt, it will transfer the bag into a crossbody or a long shoulder bag. And I really love the, the three straps um, option because 
I usually don't like people put handles and the straps and perhaps another way of using the bag with all the straps kind of built in and you can't take it off. To me, it's great it's a multi-usage bag, but if it shows, that kind of destroys the cleanness look of the bag. So I love this bag, they thought about that, you can basically transform it without even knowing that this bag could be used differently. So that's a big plus of this brand. Um, and I like this crocodile or snakeskin feel of the leather. The shape is very unique. Um, the opening is a little tricky. Um, yes, you, you twist to open. And then when you open this top part, it takes a little effort. You have to push down and really lift to get out of this lock right here. And as you can tell, the opening is really small. So I don't think my Bulgarian wallet will even fit in, which means I have to just put in a few credit cards, which they do have a credit card components, like three, two cards holder, and then perhaps iPhone, lipsticks, um, tissue paper, that's about it. So the size of this bag is just not that big. It's deep, but it's not wide enough for anything that substantial thing. And like I said, it's very well designed multi-usage bag and it's very interesting leather, beautiful color, ivory which goes with any summer outfit you can possibly imagine. The downside of it is very hard to open, takes effort, and also takes effort to take, get stuff out or put stuff in. In fact, when I first got it, I struggled whether I should keep it or I should return it. Um, at this point, I think I decided to keep it because I just feel like it's a good addition to all the other bags I have already. And I really um, want to have an ivory color bag so in the summertime, I can literally have a to-go bag. I don't have to think too much about whether it's going to go with my outfit or not. And in fact, the three different way of using this bag is a big plus. So that's why I'm keeping it. Next up is another brand that I'm not quite familiar with. So I ran across this bag while I was in Salzburg last summer. Um, it was in a shop that carries a lot of designer stuff and I walk in and this bag was on 17% off at the time. So the original price of this bag is about $1,000 and I got it for somewhere around 300 euro, which is a really good price. I was attracted to this bag immediately by this closure design, this metal design of this bag. So basically in order for you to open the bag, you have to line up, so basically twist it, turn it to 90 degrees, so it's lined up with this thing and that's how you open. To lock, you put it down and then you turn it and you flap down like that. So I, I love this design so much, that's why my eye was drawn to it. And then after I opened the bag, I found another reason why I like it. Look at this bag. This bag has a little, little pocket in the front. So you can slide in a lot of name cards if you are an entrepreneur or a woman uh, business person like I am. Or there is another secret compartment in the back. So basically you have this part and this part for anything that you like to keep separate and don't get dirty with a bunch of your other stuff. And the middle compartment is quite straightforward just with a tiny pocket right here where you can put your driver license or credit card, whatever. So the size is very decent and easy access. You can. The full size wallet won't fit per usual, but you can put in a bunch of uh, woman stuff without any problem. And the, the inside is also made of leather, so it's very luxury feel. And the other part that I love is in the back of this of this bag. There's also another compartment, which means if you need to access your credit card quickly while you are out about, you don't have to open your bag. You can just get it right here. Um, and the other beauty about this bag is how the strap is designed. So this strap has this two metal hook right here and then you can adjust the lens by pulling it in or out. So that is a very cool design so you don't ever need to worry about using those little hoops to secure the side of the strap. So this way, um, the way it's designed is the most elegant and practical. See, you can easily just adjust the lens. At this point, I have no complaint. Seriously, it's a perfect size bag, beautiful leather, very well designed strap. Um, and it has the, all the practicality um, built in, which is very user friendly bag. Last, but certainly not least, is my all time favorite designer bag Fanny bag. Here's how it looks. Let's talk about the design of this bag for a minute here. So, usually, I don't like handbags that are too complicated design 
all too flashy or too many colors or too much of elements like feathers or sequins or anything you can possibly imagine. This bag usually, in my usual taste, I probably think those um, white kind of decorations are a little too much. But in this bag, the way how it is designed, I think it's perfect. And look at this details of this little pyramid design of the closure. So the way how you close the bag is by push down like that. And if you want to open, there's a little button here. You push and that pops open. And of course, it's a multi-usage bag, again. And this bag, you can use it as a handbag or you can use it as a long shoulder bag or crossbody. Same thing as most of designer bags nowadays. Um, I love this bag so much because two main reasons. The first reason is how the inside of this bag is designed. So let's take a quick look here. Inside this bag, basically, you have two equally spaced compartments where, as you can tell, this is the Bulgari wallet that I was referring to uh, when I was reviewing other bags, it fits perfectly in one of the compartments, either the back one or the front one. And that way, you don't have any other stuff that kind of uh, uh, rubbing against your very beautiful wallet to kind of ruin the leather. That's why I like it, so I always keep nothing sharp in the front compartment. And then the back compartment is where I just kind of throw in my car keys and my sunglasses or a bunch of lipstick. And here, as you can see, there's a, a card compartment as well for credit cards or name cards or whatever you'd like to keep separately. And this to me is very important because I hate to um, put my hand into a very big and wide compartment and digging for things. The fact that this bag has two compartments makes my life so much easier and I always put my wallet in one compartment and the other stuff in the other which makes it super organized. Um, and then the color is of this bag is very neutral tone. It's it's same same stuff like the other bag, the ivory bag, the Goody bag that I was sharing. Um, it goes with everything, and I like the tiny pink kind of touch color here, as well as the gray and the pink on the handle. And the metal train is much lighter weighted compared to the Chanel the boy bag. And let's look at this. They didn't use the metal train all the way through because they thought about usability and comfort for users. And that to me means the world. Because if you have this metal thing which is kind of roundly shaped it on your shoulder for whole day, can you imagine how you will feel? So thanks to Fendi that has this much of that leather which is perfect size and length you need for your shoulder to feel comfortable. And like I said, the fact that this metal isn't as um, thick, as heavy as the Chanel the boy one, that makes a huge difference in terms of uh, everyday usage and how comfortable you can be with the bag. Um, and once again, the bottom of this bag doesn't have the metal stud, however, this um, wavy design on the front and back kind of naturally creates a gap between the ground, the surface where you're putting the bag, so the leathers are not really touching, so it kind of protects it. Um, and let's talk about the size. The size of this bag is not too big that makes you look very um, business-y, or it's not too small that you feel like you can only use it in summer. So this bag you can use all year long and nobody will feel it's out of season or it's out of date. All in all, I think I have zero complaint about this bag. I would strongly recommend it and um, there's one thing I noticed but I don't think it's a problem and here's why. Because this metal, the fact it sometimes touches the top of the, the leather will create this kind of like dark um, stain. So at first I was very unhappy, oh this is happening, the bag is going to be ruined. But guess what? They can easily be wiped with a leather care product. I have done it many times and every time I can clean it, it looks like a brand new. So that's not really a true um, cons for this bag. In terms of price, it's cheaper than the Chanel Le Boy bag. So that's why to me, this Fendi bag is top of the line, my number one recommendation. So now we've talked about bags. Um, I know I don't have a big collection of designer bags, but um, I hope my review will help you um, get an overall view of what kind of bags I have and what my view of them are, and perhaps help you to make right decisions for your designer collection. Because I, we all know designer bags cost fortune, and we don't want to make mistakes and be regret about it. 
Um, next, I would like to review some of my designer shoes. Um, and for the same reason, I hope uh, my review will help you one way or another. First, let's start with um, the Chanel Slingback shoe, which is very popular and hot all over the internet by all the celebrities and fashion bloggers. Um, so the shoe looks like this. Um, when I look at this shoe, when I put, tried it on for the first time, I really love the color combo. The tip being white and it's kind of shiny leather, patent leather, and the very refined lamp leather beige color. Um, this two color together is a killer. And it literally um, can be paired with jeans to um, A-line skirt or uh, formal pants, almost everything. And I have used this shoe for many of my uh, photo shoots, the looks you see on the blog. The front design of this shoe is perfect. It fits a wide feet person like me. The strap, however, is a problem. When I first bought it, the strap basically will fell off my the back of my foot after, let's say, 10 seconds of walking. Which is why the moment after I purchased it, I actually have Nordstrom to go and make this strap much tighter for me so it won't just slip off my, my ankle. Um, that was the first alteration I did to this shoe. And then after I got the, the shoe and the strap was fixed, I wear it. I remember the first day I wear it, I wear it for a photo shoot. And my photographer asked me to do a crisscross and sitting on the ground. And as I was sitting on the concrete ground, I was thinking I need to be very careful. And I was being very careful. I gently put my feet on the concrete floor and crisscross and I did my photo shoot. And I sit there probably about two minutes. But guess what happened after two minutes of me being extra careful with my brand new Chanel sling bag. The side of this leather, this shoe, basically I completely rubbed off. And when I noticed that, I was furious and very angry. Because for a shoe that cost $900, it better have a better quality than that. And after that happened, I literally have to take it to a shoe repair store and I paid $50 to have them basically do whatever they can. Kind of paint it over it and kind of hide the scratches. So then now the shoe looks like this. It's a little patched up, it's not perfect. Um, so that's my number one complaint about this shoe. The quality of the leather is either not good enough or too refined for, for it being an everyday wear or a street wear. So to me, that's just not acceptable. You can't charge people a thousand dollar while the quality is like this. My second complaint, unfortunately, about this very popular shoe is after I fix the strap, now it's too tight. But I guess it could be my problem. If, I, if the repair person didn't take in this much, it could just perfectly stay on but not hurting me. But for me, the fact now it's taken in, it hurts. So it's too tight. So I can't really have the strap on for more than an hour because after an hour, the back of my heel is all uh, basically sore and hurts. So my photographer always asks me, why you don't put the strap on? Why do you wear it as a slipper? And that's why. And I, as, as sad as I am already with the quality of the leather, I'm double sad because I can't really wear the strap appropriately to show off the, the elegancy of this slim bag. So in general, I do not recommend this shoe. Yes, it's Chanel, but the price does not justify. Next up, I'd like to show you a pair of Gucci shoe, which looks like this. Ta-da! It's the kind of shoe that I normally will not buy. However, I did buy it last year when I was in London for the London Fashion Week. I saw it in the airport. I have a couple hours before my flight take off, so I went shopping and this is what I saw. The reason I said I normally won't buy it is because I generally do not like anything too big of statements on the shoe. I like to keep it simple but have some details that are unique and special. This shoe is the kind of shoe a, a cause for attention. It calls for, uh, it catches people's eye because the, the design of it, this beautiful metal uh, feature here as well as the bow tie that's underneath it. However, after I wear this shoe, after I came back to Portland and I wear it for some of my photo shoots and some of the events, I find out a couple comes about this shoe. Number one issue. The tip of this leather wrapped up after two photo shoots. 
When I go out for photo shoots, I'm very gentle with my shoe. All I do is to take a few steps for my photographer to capture slight motion. And that's all I did. With two photo shoots, the tip of this leather was already rubbed off. So it kind of faded, white color. So it's very obvious this shoe already has an issue because the rest of the shoe is red and you have this rubbed off white on the tip. Now you don't see it because I just paid $50 to get it painted and repaired like what happened to the Chanel shoe. The second complaint I have is this shoe, even though it has very wide opening, for a white feet person like I am, after wearing it for about three hours walking on the street, you will feel tightness and the front of your feet will feel sore and tight and to a point if you wear any longer, you will be in pain. So that's one thing you need to know. If you are a white feet person, you probably do not want to get it. But if you are a regular or slim feet person, this probably won't be a problem for you. The other part of the shoe, same issue as the tip is the heel. The heel might get stuck when you walk on a sewer line cover, the metal thing that has gaps. If that does happen, all the leather would rub off and that's probably what happened to my heel. And once again, now you don't see it because I just got it fixed. Um, and one thing I highly recommend if you do have this shoe or do plan to buy this shoe, making sure you add a leather insole to the shoe before you even wear it. And that's also probably why my tip was rubbed off so quickly because I only get this done recently, not right after I purchased it. So that could be um, something on my side that I should have done. Other than that, the shoe is beautiful. Um, I do get compliments all the time. Does it go with many outfits? I don't think so. Um, if you follow my blog tightly, you probably only see it being featured one or two times because it really takes an outfit to be able to carry this shoe. Oftentimes you want the shoe kind of lift the outfit, however it doesn't overpowering what you're wearing. But this shoe sometimes end up just kind of overpowering, so that's probably why I don't wear it all the time. The price is... I think it's in the same price range as the Chanel sling bag. Um, between Chanel and this one, I will probably go with Chanel just because you can wear it with many outfits. Um, but in terms of quality, this shoe is better for sure. Next up, I'd like to um, review this shoe by this brand called Malone Soulier. Um, this is a shoe I was inspired to buy by one of my fa favorite fashion bloggers, which I believe most of you probably know her name, um, Annabelle from LA. Anyway, I saw it on her Instagram and loved it so much, I purchased it right away from her link, of course. Um, and the reason I love about this shoe is, first of all, the, the material of this shoe is silk. It's very high quality silk and mixing with metallic leather, um, two straps, one in the front and one in the, in, the, in the middle. And let's talk about the side view of this shoe. The fact how this shoe is curved just make you look so elegant and so feminine. And um, every time I wear this shoe, I just feel like I am the shit. And, and that is the beauty of the shoe. And every time I wear it, I got compliments. People just can't stop staring at my shoe. Downside of the shoe, this shoe, the heel is about, I would say, either four inches or four inch one quarter, which for me is slightly too high. Um, and of course, I know there are people out there who can wear maybe five inches or six inches and they can walk all day long and they're fine. But for me, as a mother of two young children, the height of this shoe oftentimes is not practical. I only wear this shoe to an event that is not longer than two hours because after two hours, your feet is gonna be dead. The other downside of this shoe is same problem as most of other shoes. The leather on the heel easily gets scratched and scraped up. Like what's happening right here? I haven't had a chance to fix it, but this happens to a lot of my shoes. Um, I'm sure it probably happened to you as well. So that's the other downside. So probably not specific about this brand, but I would like to think or hope one day all the top line designer shoes, somehow they will figure out the innovative way of keeping the coher coherent look of the shoe. However, create a material or a design that the heel doesn't do this. Because when that happens, practically you can't wear this shoe anymore unless the shoe repair person can, um, so genius, can repair it to a way that almost looks like new. The price of this shoe is not that bad. 
it's about six hundred dollar ish, um, and if you're lucky, you can get it um, discounted price on websites like the Outnet or Forward. Um, and there's all kinds of color combinations you can buy. There's the blue with gold. There's white. There's neutral with black. Um, there's many options out there. So if you like this design, and they also have different heights of the heel options. So that's something I myself might even consider getting another pair from this brand. The exactly same design, perhaps the white one. Next up is a brand that I actually own two shoes from this brand. This brand is called Stella Makani, and this pair I didn't get it in the United States, I got it in China when I was in Grey Wall doing a photo shoot and I needed a shoe so badly to go with my outfit that I picked, which is also a Stella McCartney dress. I ended up getting this shoe for that particular photo shoot, which I paid high price for and don't ask me how much I paid because after you hear what I'm about to say, you will laugh. So the shoe looks like this. It's pretty, right? It's silver, it's metallic, shiny, and it has the straps, kind of straps around your feet and you can strap it whatever way, whatever way you like. Um, it's very pretty on for photos. This, in fact, is my photographer's favorite pair. When we go out for a shoot, he oftentimes demands me wearing this shoe. This shoe is practically designed for display and it's not designed to wear. Let me tell you why. First of all, the front part of the shoe has this very narrow strap that when you wear it with the heel being so high, you basically tilt forward when you're standing. So this strap adds all the pressure to your foot. Um, and then these two openings right here are super narrow. So I kind of dig into your feet. If your feet is like mine, that are fast, that will be a problem. But if your feet is narrow, you probably feel less compression pressure, but you might still get the pain from the top part. Just because of the fact you are on 4 inches and a half quarter height of the heel. That's the first part, that's not comfortable. And second part is the strap. Guess why? Yes, you can wrap around your ankles very beautifully with cross cross, double cross, one cross, or whatever. But they don't stay if you don't tie them super tight. After you think you tie it very tight, you walk for a few steps, they all fall down and you have to retie it. And eventually you just have to tie it super tight in order for it not to move at all. But when you tie it super tight, not only it hurts your foot, it also makes your walking almost impossible because your foot don't get this range of movement which is part of the natural thing that happens when you walk. So that's why. With the heel being so high, with the front digging into your feet, with the strap that doesn't really stay, in order to stay, I have to really dig into my muscle, which then hurts and you can't barely walk. And when you wear the shoe for more than five minutes, all you wanted to do is cry and throw the shoe out of the door. Okay, I'm super excited to review the next pair. And before I do, I'd like to ask everyone to pause and think what was the last designer bag that I shared in this video. Okay, is it Chanel? Is it Nina Rucci? No, it's Fenty. Now, this pair of shoes I'm about to share is also Fendi. So you might think I'm in favor of Fendi for whatever reason, maybe personal connection, or maybe somehow I had a long history with Fendi, or maybe even Fendi paid me to review their products. Let me tell you. I do not have any connection with Fendi. Fendi comes into my uh, vision just like any other designer brand. I check it out. I buy things when I like it. So I don't have any history with Fendi and they did not pay me to review their product. So this pair of Fendi shoe, I purchased it when I was in New York. In fact, a couple months ago. I believe February, New York Fashion Week, I was there and I have two hours. I went to Soho and I went to Fendi Boutique Shop and this shoe basically just fell into my lap. I immediately was attracted to this shoe because this thing in the back. 
At first, when I saw it, it was on a mannequin, and I thought this was something they put on the mannequin to make this shoe to stay. I did not realize this design, this cushion, patty, pinky thing in the back of the strap, is part of this shoe. And let me tell you why it's so special. Because when you put on this shoe, you put the strap on. Not only it will slip off your heel, it makes it feels like heaven. It makes you forget that you are wearing a high heel. It makes you realizing this kind of shoe does exist in the world. That it's not only pretty, not only it's three inches high heel, and does not hurt and have zero places that are not comfortable. So let me tell you a little bit more about the front of this shoe. The front of this shoe is made of this mesh, see-through mesh with the kind of rubbery texture things on the on the edge. Um, it looks narrow, but guess what? With my very wide fat feet, I'm fitting the shoe perfectly fine with no place pinching me or hurting or discomfort from the get-go. And when I was purchased, I was I was a little afraid. Maybe now it's comfortable, but what about after I wear it for a couple hours and I walk on the street? Will it hurt? That I didn't know when I buy it, right? But now I've owned this shoe for more than a couple months, and I have been wearing it to multiple events, to multiple photo shoots, and I wear it all day long. Guess what? I have finally found a pair of designer shoes that is not only pretty, but it also is perfectly designed in terms of comfort. And this strap right here is stretchy. It's wide enough, won't make you feel pinchy or discomfort at all, and it's perfectly designed in a way it's not too tight and it's not too loose. So do I have any complaint about this shoe? I have to say, zero. Guess why? The heel of this shoe is made of this shiny material. I don't know if it's a paint or it's it's just the material. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to do some research and digging to find out. Uh, but so far I have seen no scratch, no peeling off like what's happening to all of my other designer shoes. Um, and and I of course I did this that I recommended for the Gucci shoe add a layer of leather um, insole so to prevent the shoe or the mesh from being rubbing off or uh, basically destroy while you walk. So this is why this is my favorite pair of slingback shoe. It's beautiful, has all this neutral tone, pastel color, which is very much in these days. And practically, you can pair this with almost any, any style of outfits or pants or skirts you can possibly imagine. The price is almost the same as a Gucci bag, as a Gucci shoe, as the Chanel sling bag that I mentioned. But this pair is 10 times more value than the price you pay for the other shoes. If you are up for a new pair of designer shoe and your finance allows it, I will highly recommend to get this pair. You'll be 10 times happier, 10 times more comfortable. You will thank me for recommending this shoe to you. Obviously, Fendi is the winner of the day. But like I said, um, I have no history with Fendi. My feelings of this brand has literally been upgraded or lifted. Now Fendi is my top choice for anything designer. I own, personally own two other Fendi sunglasses and a few um, of Fendi outfit as well. Almost every one of them surprised me in a way that I have never imagined. So I'm sure I will continue to explore Fendi and perhaps one day I will make my way and to be collaborating with the brand that I truly embrace and truly love. That goes to my review of all of my designer shoes and designer bags that I am in love nowadays. Uh, I'm sure over the time I will get more. I would like to keep this a tradition. Maybe every six months I will do a review of my designer collections and share with you my honest feedback. Um, and there's one thing you have to know about me. I like to let my followers know my true opinion of a product, of a shoe, of a, a bag. Uh, I don't sugarcoat, I tell you what I think. That is just one thing I believe is very important as a social media influencer. We don't give out false information or false review of the product just because that's something we got paid to do. And as I'm telling you now, I do not do that. I do not like to lie to my followers or lie to myself for something I don't like. 
um, so you can feel very comfortable of my reviews. They are all 100% authentic and they are not sponsored. Thank you so much for watching. I am very excited that you are continuing following my channel, following my journey on Instagram and YouTube. If you are not following me yet, make sure you subscribe to Style Right Fashion Blog. I will make sure to continuously deliver high quality content to your satisfaction. Let me know what you think, leave your comments, and I'll see you next time, my dear Style Riders.